2021, Meta, formerly known as Facebook, found itself under fire with uncovered reports regarding their app's negative effects on teens. This week, we asked you all what apps you use the most. 42% of you said Instagram, 28% said TikTok, and 30% of you said Snapchat. With so much of our generation plugged into social media, how heavily should we take discoveries such as the one uncovered by the quote, Facebook whistleblower? During this four-part social media special report, reporter Madeline Roberts and I will partner with Ruchi Sankoli on the newspaper staff to bring you an in-depth look. What's the first word you think of when you think of social media? Um, toxic. TikTok. Toxic beauty standards. Instagram. Time-consuming. Toxic. Snapchat. Beauty standards. According to the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, 90% of teens have used social media, 51% visit social media daily, and that on average, teens are online almost nine hours a day. And that doesn't include time for homework. Um, everyone's really chronically online. Like, they don't, like, have a good grasp of the world around them. I don't think it's either. I think it started with pure intentions, but I think it spiraled into this big thing. It still has, like connection benefits and people are meeting each other a lot and making friends where they wouldn't but at the same time there's like downsides that everyone knows about. So aside from my work as a therapist there's actually a significant body of research that shows that social media has generally pretty negative impacts on teens um, and actually on all people but because of the developing nature of the brain the impact on teens um, exposure can be increases in mental health issues like anxiety, depression, um, seeking of substance use, disordered eating. Um, so all of those things are actually related to the amount of time spent on social media. Some of the negative impacts can include anxiety, depression, seeking of substance use, disordered eating, and more. According to NPR, emerging science suggests that the human brain doesn't actually reach full maturity until the age of 25. This means that during the teen years, social media and its influence can be super impactful on a developing brain. Uh, it's not helping people with mental illnesses. Uh, people are having like trouble interacting in the real world uh, and aren't like paying attention. People comparing when it comes to Instagram. Probably people wanting things that other people have that they can't have. If you are heavily invested in social media, to the extent that you're also experiencing the opportunity cost of not engaging in a face-to-face -face way that is a real-time conversational manner, um, there is pretty large potential for your social skills to be impacted. We're no longer having authentic, real-time interaction. Everything is kind of thought through multiple times. I think we could all agree a real-time interaction is actually harder, right? You actually have to stay focused on the other person. You can't stop, think about it, rewrite what you want to write, that kind of thing. And so the more you engage with social media, stands to reason the less practiced you'll be at having those direct, complex human interactions and communications, right? In 1998, Congress passed a law called the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, which limits children under the age of 13 years of age from being online on websites or on social media because they are considered a vulnerable group. During this age, social interaction is crucial to a teen's development. It's hard enough to deal with the acceptance and rejection poll in person, let alone by yourself behind a screen, where what you see is only the highlight reel. It's just, it's a lot of just like thinking about people judging you. Giving girl, young girls and other people insecurities. Just people are always expected to be like perfect. Like you're supposed to have perfect hair, perfect body, and if you don't, you're sort of dragged through the mud. So the American um, Pediatrics Association, when they had guidelines around this, said no more than two hours all told of engagement with electronics, that is video games, social media, um, you know, anything that is strictly for entertainment. Now the exception there is if you're doing schoolwork or research, that's not the same. Um, if you are having face-to-face -face conversations like you're on a Zoom actually talking to someone in real time, not the same thing, right? But time just spent scrolling no more than two hours a day. <laughs> um, otherwise, you're likely to see some pretty big interactions with your just social development. Melendez says that the more a person engages with social media, the less practice they will have with direct human interaction and communication. 
According to a study by the University of Washington, each additional hour of screen time during the ages 1 to 3 is associated with a 10 percent increase in likelihood of attention problems at age 7. Our plan for this series isn't to scare you away from modern technology. Instead, we want to provide you with facts, statistics, and opinions of peers that you can use to make the best decisions for you. With CPHS News, I'm Katie Smith. Thanks, Katie and Madeline. Stay tuned for Episode 2 of our social media special.